Test in the video. Test in the video. Hey guys, it's Will Patson here again, and welcome to another video. Today I'm talking to you about being creative. Now I wrote a blog post a few days ago and it's just been published online to my website about being creative and I thought that I would show you guys in a video what to do to get creative. A big question that I get asked a lot of the time on YouTube is how to become creative and how creativity sets into your mind or how creativity is or what it is. People ask me all sorts of questions about creativity. Now to be a designer, you need to be creative and depending on what sort of segment of design you're in or what subsection of graphic design you're in, then you'll need to be more creative than others. Whether this is creative in your layout or whether it's just creative in the way that you need to design some shapes. Probably you're thinking that you're not creative or you think that you are. There's either two sort of strong points. It's like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. You're either creative or you're not creative. But I wanna get rid of that misconception because I used to think that I wasn't creative. When I was at school, I used to see people being creative and I used to think that they were naturally creative. And I think a lot of people say that they are naturally creative. A lot of people say to me that I am naturally creative in my job and that isn't true. No one is actually naturally creative. We have all got the same creativeness inside us, but it depends on what we work on. Here is a good analogy for you to understand what creativity is. Creativity is like muscle, it's like body mass. If you were to go to the gym and intentionally work out and you were like pumping iron in the gym and you were running and intentionally trying to make your muscles bigger and grow in certain stretches or certain weights, then your muscles are going to grow. That's just a side effect of what you're doing. When you work out, you generally get a bit musclier or you get a bit toned and you make a difference. Creativity is exactly the same thing. If you decided that you wanna start getting more creative, then it's like a muscle that you need to flex and work out. You need to do this intentionally and consistently for it to actually work. If you say to yourself that I'm sort of creative in this way, uh, and that's great, then you're on the right slant there. But the problem is, is that if you stop feeding the creativity or flexing your creative muscles, then your creativity will diminish. And it's the opposite way when you want to actually get creative. For you to become creative, you need to start doing creative muscle flexes. You can call it the sort of creative bench press. If you're wanting to turn your arms up and get your muscles working on your arms to get big biceps or something, then you'll need to start using your arm muscles or that, was it, the bench press to actually get those muscles. If you're wanting to get more creative in your logo design, then you need to start off with a piece of paper and a pencil and start drawing concepts of logos. And you keep doing this and you keep doing it and you keep doing it and you'll get more creative as the process goes on. Creativity is literally a muscle that you need to flex. So if you're on this channel and you're worried about your creativity or you're worried because more people are creative than you or that you don't feel as creative as some people, don't worry, all you need to do is practice. Anyone is creative. I believe that we all have creativity inside of us, but for us to unlock that, we need to consistently and intentionally work out our creative bench pressing. A few exercises that you could do to get your creative juices flowing through you is drawing on pencil and paper very simple logo concepts. If you're a painter, use different tools. Start very simple. You don't want to go ahead and do something extravagant. Take it down to the bare minimum, pencil and paper. For me, I just doodle on a piece of paper, different abstract shapes which lead me to letter forms or they lead me to logo design rhythms around the circle of the logo design, if you get what I mean. Also, another way to get creative or another way to sort of pump those creative juices into your head is to use different tools. If you look on Behance and you see all these different calligraphers and they're doing different typography with different tools, you can see how creative they can get. In the 1960s, typographers started using the ruling pen for calligraphy. It gave a very, very jagged calligraphy edge to it and it was like a paintbrush. This gives a really good splatter effect and that is a really creative way of writing. It's mainly used now within horror films and that is how creative it is. It's done within a ruling pen. Another way you can do this is by chopping a piece of bamboo into a quill and then you can draw like that or write like that. Use different tools. Don't feel like you have to stay on the computer all the time or don't feel like you have to stay on paper all the time either. 
Anyway, those were my top tips of getting creative. Now the blog post is in the description if you want to go and check that out. I go into a bit more detail about creativity in there and what it is, what it means and how to get creative. You can also follow me on Instagram and you can follow me on Twitter down below as well. If you have any questions about this video or if you're in need of a logo designer or a graphic designer, feel free to go to the description down below and contact me via my email. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.